Welcome to Creeping It Real. I am Judah. Last week, Jacob and I witnessed what might be the very best and greatest movie of 1991. It's a shame it came straight to video, but it is The Refrigerator. And yes, it is a horror movie in more ways than one. I wish I could share a trailer with you, but there doesn't seem to be one. So from what I read, this was actually written in 1987, and it finally came to fruition in 1991. Hooray for the 90s. It belongs in the 80s. Even though I love the, the 80s, and this is a horrible movie, this definitely belonged in the 80s. But 91 will do good enough. So the refrigerator is about, from what the synopsis says, a refrigerator with a portal to hell and a taste for blood. The movie starts off with a couple living in New York. They're partying. Uh, they coming home, walking through uh, definitely a lot of iffy situations. They're going up several flights of stairs. People are looking at them. There's a real weird situation going on the steps. At one point, they make it upstairs. Clothes start flying off. You know, they can't even make it to the bedroom. Plop right in front of the refrigerator. They just start going at it. And the refrigerator doesn't take too kindly to this and kills them. Cut to a uh, Midwestern couple who are young and excited to get away from their family and they want to move to the big city. They may not have been Midwestern, but they definitely were not city folk. Okay, so let's go with some country bumpkins or at least uh, the suburbs. They want to live in the big city. They purchased this apartment that was recently owned by a couple. They got eaten by a refrigerator. They excitedly move there. They go in. They both have big dreams of uh, making it big. The woman, Eileen, she wants to, you know, go, get into Broadway. And Steve has big dreams to climb up the corporate ladder. You obviously know straight from the beginning something is weird. Uh, this, I mean, uh, from the obvious fact that this refrigerator just killed two people at the beginning of the movie. So Steve has dreams about waking up at night. He goes to the refrigerator and he sees a tiny version of his boss stepping out from behind the milk carton. And his boss is talking to him about how Eileen, his wife, is a good one. And she's off to the side, you know, on the side of the refrigerator. And she's next to some butter or something. And she's like ironing clothes or something. And, he, and the boss is like, you got to keep Eileen. She's a good one. And I know she's, she's going to be a supportive wife. Steve's like, yay. He's all excited. He goes to work. Eileen is having dreams. Hers are much more frightening. After their first night, Juan, the plumber, comes in. And he's like... He's very soft-spoken. This dude rocks. I'm, I'm here to see if you need any help. I'm not even going to... Sorry. I'm already apologizing. The accent is horrible. Dude is great. I love this dude. Um, uh, right off the bat, I'll just say, this movie is horrible. I'm going to give it a three. I would not watch it. I wouldn't suggest it to anybody. I don't even know. Jacob could barely make it through it. He was falling asleep. This was worse than Carnosaur. Not worse than Terrifier, but worse than Carnosaur. So Juan comes and he's like, you need some help? And she's like, well, there's a draft and that refrigerator, what's up with that refrigerator? And she's giving him all look for her, And he's like, look, lady, I'm just, I just came to help. She gets on the phone. She's talking to her mom. She's like, mom, I, I've got a audition. You, you just, I'm cooking food. You, you got to leave me alone. I, I got to, I got to go. Juan overhears her and he's like, you're an actress. I am also in the theater. I'm a performer. When I lived in Bolivia, I used to dance professionally. Flamenco. Juan is, Juan is amazing. I'm not going to lie. 
Eileen is just like walking on the street. I can't remember why. And just in this in this random like open field. Now this is New York New York City, okay? There's just this like homeless woman tent, which is not surprising, especially in New York. But it's the only one. And it's surrounded by buildings. So th- there's this field, one one homeless person encampment makes no sense. She goes in. There's this woman, like some kind of a, I don't know what you would call her, like some kind of a card reader, palm reader. That apartment building is evil. You need to get out. And Eileen freaks out and runs away. Uh, She runs into Juan and she's telling him how it's evil. And he's kind of acting like, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. The place is fine. The next day, Juan brings his like cousin to come do some work on the refrigerator and so forth. And Juan's like, well, I got to leave, but I'm going to leave my cousin here. And Eileen's like, well, I got to take off. So they both take off. And then there's this battle between Juan's cousin and the refrigerator and the refrigerator wins, it crushes his cousin. And across the way, a woman is watching the whole thing through her window doesn't call the cops, doesn't tell anybody about it. She's just like, eh, possessed refrigerators. I've seen it all. We live in New York. Speaking of possessed refrigerators, we watched a movie called The Mangler. Uh, my cousin Brianna suggested it. I was glad she did. It was a, it was a, it was a good suggestion. I didn't like the movie, but it was a good suggestion for the, the podcast. Now, Based off of me not enjoying that movie, there was a scene where there was a possessed refrigerator. And I was like, well, you don't see that too often. So I'll give this movie a better score than usual just because I've never seen a possessed refrigerator trying to kill people. So I'm thinking that the refrigerator is trying to, you know, steal from the mangler. They're like, yeah, why did the mangler, they should have just stuck with that whole refrigerator thing instead of going for a a press in a washing uh, dry cleaners. They, sh- they should have gone with this refrigerator thing. Turns out Mangler came out in 95. So I think, was it a Stephen King movie? Was it guys? I don't know. Check me on that. So I think maybe Stephen King saw the refrigerator and he was like, well, that's kind of funny. It's not worth a whole hour and a half but I can do a little bit piece in my movie, The Mangler, and that'll work out quite fine. And it did. It's much much more enjoyable. This movie did bring back two things. First of all, the name Eileen reminded me of, uh, let's see, who are, who are they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dixie's Midnight Runners. Do you guys remember these dudes? Come on, Eileen. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. These guys and their overalls. Apparently, this was the only hit they ever had. And this, this dude is super creepy. Apparently, the song has some kind of a connection to a real life story with him um, and a girl when they were both 13. I want to be very clear. They were both 13, but um, they got into things that 13-year-olds should not be getting into. And then to write a song about it, that's, that's super freaking creepy. I don't know. I do love that song, though, but after seeing the music video like the whole band just follows this chick around and they they super creep on her i didn't like it it made me it made me see the song in a totally different light i i still enjoy listening to it but the song ew, ew, totally different light now and now and when just a second ago i read that it was based off a real story i was like oh god this is this is hideous so this movie did bring back that that nostalgia for that song and it also reminded me of William Perry. Do you guys know William? William Perry was defensive tackle. He was part of the 1985 Chicago Bears team that won the Bears' first Super Bowl. That would be Super Bowl 20. And also says that William Perry is the first. No, lied. William Perry is the heaviest player at 335 pounds to ever make a touchdown at a Super Bowl. And it says that he still keeps that title. 
Anyway, that was a big thing when I was a kid. The Bears, everybody remember the Super Bowl shuffle? We are the Bears shuffling through. Okay, anyway. So the fridge, even though I care nothing about football or sports in any kind of way, as a child, a very young child, I was super into that. The fact that he was called the fridge. And, uh, you know, if anybody was ever to be like, who's your favorite uh, Chicago Bears player? I'd be like, oh, the fridge. I, I hate sports, but that's how it was. So, you know, what? honestly, I probably would have enjoyed a documentary about William Perry, Perry way more than this movie. So Steve and Eileen are kind of trying to work through this together. At one time, you can see that Steve's really pissed off that he wasn't getting any sex from his wife. And then later on, they do decide to have sex. But she's kind of like, it's too hot. And he's like, no worries. I got a plan. So he opens up the refrigerator, puts a fan in there, and he's like, air conditioning. Let's do it, baby. So they make sweet love in front of this refrigerator. You know what? Now that I think about it, that's probably all the rudeness of the people who live in this apartment that's pissing this refrigerator off. I'd be like, dude, take it to the bedroom. I do not want to see your naked ass in front of me gyrating, please. It's probably all the sex in front of it that drove it to to kill people. Eileen's going crazy. She's begging Steve. She calls him from work. He comes home. He's super pissed off. I can't just leave work. She's mad and she's like, we got to get rid of that refrigerator. And he's all like, get rid of a perfectly good refrigerator and do what? And she's like, I don't care. We got to get rid of it. And Juan is sitting in the other room. And he's all like, I'll get rid of it for you. And Steve's like, Juan, shut the up. You're not doing nothing with my refrigerator. So Juan goes away. It all comes to a head at some point. And things are going crazy. Steve and Eileen are there. And then the fridge is going crazy. And then Juan comes running in with that uh, vagrant woman that's like a, a palm reader or whatever she is, plus some third random dude that you don't know who the heck this guy is. They all just come barging into their apartment because of screaming or something. I have no idea. And then... Not just the refrigerator is possessed and trying to kill them. Other appliances start coming to life. There's a, there's a trash can with a, one of those lids that you step on and opens up. There's some fans, all, all kinds of weird things that are coming. And this trash can eats this dude's leg off. And then these fans come and destroy his face. They chop them all up. At some, Steve gets eaten uh, Juan, while that's happening, Juan and Eileen are taken off with this vagrant woman. But then for some reason, she runs back and the refrigerator kills her. Uh, it ends with like Eileen and Juan together. Like in end of the story, it just ends abruptly in a weird way. Yeah. Okay. So she's now got a part in some kind of Broadway play. Hooray for her. Her and Juan are, are like apparently hooked up now, but the refrigerator just keeps on living. Nobody ever does anything about it. This movie gets a three. I give one a 10 dude rocks. But Juan was definitely the highlight of this movie. 1991's The Refrigerator, a true classic that should not be miss missed by anyone. If you call yourself a horror fan in any way, 
the refrigerator needs to be on your list. You know, I've never watched Attack the Killer Tomatoes. My parents saw it when I was a child and they told me about it, but they would never let me watch it. I think I need to revisit, eh, revisit. I need to visit that at some point. I have a feeling that it's probably on the same levels as the refrigerator. Maybe not. From what I hear, it has a, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes has some actors like George Clooney. I might be making that up. They made their first appearance in a movie or something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you have a suggestion for a movie you think that we should check out. Whether it be Jake and I watching it, streaming it together on Rumble, or me just watching it on my own and giving you my thoughts, uh, please la leave that in the comments. Uh, I do have a couple other channels that I run. One is called On Company Time. We play silly games and challenges at work while on the clock, hence On Company Time. And then there's another channel called On Company Time Shorts. Obviously, that's where we post our shorts. Uh, I do a lot of unboxing on that channel. We do day in the life at On Company Time. Things of that nature. I'd love it if you swing over to those and check them out. Once again, hi, I'm Judah. This is Creepin' It Real. Be good. See you later.